My name's Lisa Jackson, and this year I've been researching the men who came back from the First World War and spent time at the Dunwich Inebriate Institution on North Stradbroke Island. I work at the North Stradbroke Island Historical Museum and for this centenary of the First World War, we have been researching the men who came back from the First World War and spent time in the Dunwich Benevolent Asylum. And in doing that research, I discovered that there was a lot of men who were admitted to the asylum as inebriates because they had a problem with alcohol in the post-war years. So when I applied for this fellowship, I thought I had a very small, nicely contained topic of these 50 returned soldiers who became inebriates. But during the course of my research, I found more and more men who had been admitted to the Dunwich Inebriate Institution, and I ended up with a list of over 250 men. So the Dunwich Inebriate Institution was a subset of the Dunwich Benevolent Asylum. And the way the asylum ran was that there was never enough money for things to be done properly. Inmates, if they could work, were expected to work. And as a reward for that work, they would be given a tot of rum or a half a pint of ale. And that was just a standard practice. To keep track of where they were when they weren't in Dunwich, that's where the State Library records really came in handy. There's really interesting minutes of the Red Cross Association from those times. Uh, the Red Cross had a number of homes for returned soldiers and they offered facilities for soldiers to spend time and look after themselves. One really significant um, item about some of the men is uh, the photographs in the Queenslander before the soldiers embarked to go overseas. Many of them had their photo taken and published in the Queenslander. And for many of these men, they're the only photographs I can find and really one of the few traces left of their war service. I have shed many, many tears over these fellows, especially reading their repatriation records, because their repatriation records just documents really in many cases, their decline over many years and their ongoing struggle with the government for recognition and for basic health care, which in many cases was denied, especially if they became alcoholics. Another part of this story is that a lot of those World War I soldiers who spent time in Dunwich were buried in the Dunwich Cemetery with just iron markers which over the years have been eroded or buried or they're no longer in the right place. So there's dozens of World War I soldiers in that cemetery in now unmarked graves and there is really no way of locating them. That is a big part of the story as well, that they, they disappear from the records and then their graves disappear. I'm really hoping that this research honours their war service in some small way and helps us remember that we really haven't done a great job in looking after um, our return soldiers. <laughs>